Hey guys, Don Rice here, and <clears throat> I'm going to be hosting a, a group of scale builders here in the San Diego area known as Warbirds West. It's just a social group, like a book club, if you will. We get together every once in a while. And since I'm going to be hosting this particular meeting, I thought, well, this is probably a good opportunity now that the cockpit is completed for me to do a full mock-up. So I've got the uh, the elevators are installed, the hinges are not, so you can see it still comes off and on, but um, everything operates here, including the little boost tabs. Same thing over here. This is a good opportunity for me to kind of do a full systems check. So <clears throat> I've gotten the, uh, the tail wheel mounted uh, and the tail hook. I mean, most of the stuff you guys have seen before on previous videos. I'm essentially going to do a full systems check and put together a checklist of all the things that need to be done because uh, I'm getting down to the short strokes here. I think that this thing uh, will probably be, well, the goal is to get it ready by Christmas. Um, I'd like to have it at the AMA convention for a static show. So that's all tied. That thing is tied back to a push rod. It's right here. That's that puts the tail tail hook down, tail hook up, tail hook down, tail hook up. All right. Well, the last time we looked at my tail wheel hookup, it was all running off pneumatics. I have since sent the gear off to down and locked and had it converted to electrics. And so this is how it works now. Just like that. See, it's, this reminds me I need to actually put my tail wheel on. Coming up. I think that's pretty cool. Safari so goody. Alright, looking down inside, you can see the full cockpit is installed. Uh, there is this particular carbon rod. This is uh, this rod will house the pull pull cables for the tail wheel. Um, and so this goes all the way back, it goes through the cockpit and exits um, above the tail wheel where we can't see it. Uh, and then also the stick. The stick will eventually get mounted, glued, high sold, fiberglass, whatever is required uh, to this tube. Next thing in the order of operations here during assembly is to get um, that actuator installed. So. Uh, it's the L16, which makes it the bigger uh, size over the L12. Uh, I want to say it's a 140 millimeter throw, which is um, more than five inches. And uh, and I believe I actually got the mid rate on in terms of speed versus torque. Uh, and it's a 12 volt system. This guy right here that sits on top, this board is the controller 
So this turns it into a servo, so it's got position feedback and and uh, which gives me the ability to do ATVs and endpoints and and servo speed adjustments if I want to. Everything like you would normally get from a servo. Uh, this particular piece right here, this is a 12 volt uh, boost regulator. So it takes my regular battery voltage and boosts it up to 12 volts. Um, and just be, and this is a non-flight uh, critical activity. Um, so I put this thing on a one amp fast blow fuse. So if this thing ever, you know, gets bound up, I don't need it drawing current and killing my battery. So anyway, that's mounted all the way, all the way up there, um, uh, near the firewall. And right here will go the throttle servo very shortly. Okay, so I have just finished mounting the throttle servo. It goes right in there next to the Fragelli actuator for the canopy. So that's in. The push rod that goes off to the engine is in. Alright, I'm getting ready for the next layer to drop in. So here I can show you the uh, the actuator and the trolley system. Pretty cool. Okay, the next thing that goes in is the fuel tank. This is a 32 ounce fuel tank and this structure here is actually its eighth inch end grain balsa with carbon laminated top and bottom. It's very strong. It's very light and it's roughly mounted on the CG it's just a little bit in front of the CG. You see the CG right here? Kind of add some paint on it, um, but that goes in, and with 20 pounds, you know, figure this thing weighs two pounds, uh, so all it takes is about 10 G's, and this thing with a full tank of gas could weigh 20 pounds. Um, I have tested this by supporting the uh, the corners here, laid a 25 pound bag of lead shot on this, and it only deflected down 112 thousandths, so. It's an extremely stiff structure, uh, so nothing to worry about there. Still got lots of room up in here. I really don't have any plans for it. Hopefully I don't need it. Okay, so after the fuel tank goes in, um, then this plate down here actually should have gone in before the fuel tank. I had to lift the fuel tank. You can see the bottom of the fuel tank right here. Um, so that had to go up a bit in order to get this into place. This is the switch plate and I've got three heavy duty switches and there might be a fourth one going in. I'm not really sure about the final configuration but this is also where the uh, air tank pressure input valve and the pressure meter, the, they'll all be mounted to this thing. This is all accessible through the fuel tank cap in front of the canopy. And then this plate goes on. This is uh, the same material as this stuff. So what I told you about that is true of this. You can see the sandwich here. I just haven't painted this with the zinc chromate paint yet. Uh, this one is essentially done and done, but there are still things I need to mount here and I haven't quite figured out that final configuration. But this is the servo for the tail hook. That is the tail wheel steering. That is the rudder. And so that's been mounted. And essentially, that more or less completes everything I know about what goes inside this fuselage. There are still things I don't know. There's a lot of wiring, probably, and um, you know, who knows? Maybe gyro stabilizers. Also, I obviously don't have a receiver in here. So still lots to figure out um, but that's it for now 
I'm going to end this particular video at this point and then I'll start another one to deal with uh, the engine mounting and all the crap that goes inside the cowl later.